Hello everyone, my name is Weam and welcome to another episode of CORE. As you've seen in the title of this video, we're going to be discussing the Nazca Lines today. The Nazca Lines have been hidden in plain sight for thousands of years because modern humans have not yet invented modern flying machines. The official date of their discovery is 1927 by Peruvian archaeologist Toribio Mejia. Mejia by Peruvian archaeologist Toribio Mejia Zespe. Phew! In 1939, Paul Kosk was the first person to document these lines by hiring a plane and taking high-quality images of the plateau. And the first person to study these formations was Maria Reiki. The world only started learning about the Nazca Lines, however, later in the 70s, when Eric von Doniken made his books and movies about this subject. As Russian scientist Igor Alexeev demonstrated in 2012, these lines and shapes are far more complicated than what we were led to believe. There is always a clear and distinct approach to the construction of these figures. In today's episode, we will dive further than anyone has done before to talk about the mysteries that surround Nazca and its formations and to summarize the latest discoveries from this region. But before we get started, if you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Uyam, as you've known by now. Please subscribe as I make thought-provocative content every week. Also, please go support these other channels as they are what make my work possible. And now, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we will discuss today is the reason why it took us thousands of years to discover this amazing phenomenon. When we view the geoglyphs from the ground observation points, all of this does not look so impressive. In most cases, the surface that was used to draw the geoglyphs is not flat and thus makes it extremely difficult to view unless you're standing exactly on top of it. If you step just a little bit to the side, a perfectly straight line turns into a random pile of stones and simply disappears. And if it's an image, we cannot even figure out what it is depicting, which makes it absolutely necessary to climb to a specific altitude in order to view these drawings. Even up until recently, with the introduction of high-definition Google Maps, were we able to see some of the more sophisticated structures clearly, which are only viewable from a height of up to a kilometer. Some structures are as long as 10 kilometers, and it's so unclear what was the, pers what was the purpose of constructing lines of such immense size. Before we get into the details of the constructions, let's first examine the location of these geoglyphs. Contrary to the known belief, Nazca is not the only place in Peru that has geoglyphs. In fact, the west coast of South America is riddled with geoglyphs. But Nazca has the highest concentration of lines and figures. The Nazca Plateau is located about 40 kilometers from the coastline. The distribution of these geoglyphs stretches north about 200 kilometers to the town of Pisco near the Paracas Peninsula. There even exists lines in Casma and near Lima, which is 400 kilometers from Nazca, and even as far as Trujillo, which is 800 kilometers away from Nazca. This area is so large that the country can't even protect it, which is causing the disappearance of a lot of geoglyphs with time, as these photos are showing. In the 1970s, the astronomer and professor Gerald Hawkins, who conducted some research here, pointed out that the geometric accuracy of construction of geoglyphs was above the photometric capabilities that existed at the time being. This 10 kilometer line is only 15 centimeters wide, but it is visible clearly due to a shining effect of the sand. With recent satellite imaging surveys, this line has now been confirmed to be straight. When you create a link between the tangent points using a straight line, you will see that the deviation of the straight line from the ancient line will not exceed 1.5 meters, which falls under the tolerances of satellite surveying over long distances due to its high speed and its unlikely vertical positioning. It's also worth noting that the line distance at the horizon visible here is only 3 kilometers so it goes another seven kilometers, three of which are on very challenging terrain. This is proof that the line was well-planned, properly designed, 
and impeccably constructed. What becomes apparent as well is that the line centers are used to draw multiple straight lines from. This is not the only impressive feat of design. When examining the Nazca figures, we find a similar construction mechanism amongst them all. Most complex designs start with a filled-in trapezoid with some dots at its base. The end of the trapezoid is the marking of the beginning of the complex figure design. When we examine it further, we see that the entire figure is drawn with a single line. This is a pretty unique style of drawing that is hard to do on paper, yet alone on the desert floor. The total length of the line here is approximately 5 kilometers, which goes to show the huge land needed to be surveyed and cleared to create this figure. But this is not the only complex design. There are hundreds of these designs spread around the Nazca Plateau. Here we can see another design of the most famous monkey geoglyph, which again has the filled trapezoid leading to the long zigzag element, then draws the monkey, then notice how the tail continues down to form another zigzag design, all with a single continuous line. When examining the different figures spread on the plateau, at first, we might think that the designs are basic and squiggly due to the inaccuracy of the creation process. However, if we examine them more closely, we notice a rather modern design. The style reminds us of that of a modern graphic designer. When Maria Reich did her initial studies to determine how these designs were executed, she was surprised to find that the designs were very accurate and smooth and far from random. We ponder to this day upon how they were able to achieve this fluidity and quality of curves. Interestingly enough, in 2012, the Russian scientist Igor Alexeev hired a graphic designer to try to replicate this work manually. And not surprisingly, he was not able to achieve the accuracy needed without using a graphic design software that allowed him to utilize a Bezier tool. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, the Bezier curve is a parametric curve used in computer graphics. This proof alone allows us to go past speculation about the nature of this ancient civilization that designed and executed these glyphs. But, as usual, I like to go deeper. <laughs> the largest set of images and figures found at Nazca are 400 meters long. For comparison, here is a Boeing 747 in the corner. If we examine things carefully, we notice that the figure matter is more important than the figure itself. For example, this pelican's beak is stretched out far beyond regular perspective, perhaps as an artistic expression. However, an art that could not possibly be perceived from ground level. This drawing in particular has to be perceived from a height of one kilometer to be appreciated. Also, it's important to note that no hills or mountains in the region allow you to see these cliffs, hence why they weren't discovered till recently. So unless they had drones, helicopters, or airplanes, it makes no sense to want to construct such complex drawings in a place that is so remote you need a day's worth of hiking to get to on foot from the closest ancient settlement. And that's not to mention the desert conditions, which make it very difficult to survive the hot temperatures with no water in sight. Maria Reich highlighted in her culmination of over 50 years of investigations that shifting a line for just a few inches will lead to an immediate failure of balance. It's hard to take the significance of these observations at first, especially if we have never visited the site or examined the work closely, which is why people like Joe Nickel from the American Skeptic Society tried to recreate this work assisted by his colleagues using sticks and other primitive measuring devices. The shape of the drawing could be achieved, but the balance and orderliness of the authentic drawing was not matched which showcases that these figures can't be constructed with primitive tools. As Igor later demonstrated in his work, scaling and replicating these designs onto the landscape requires specific instruments. 
When examining the infamous ant design carefully, two things become quickly apparent. The first is that the ant has eight legs instead of six, which makes it a spider. So stop referring to it as an ant, you ignorant <laughs> And the second is that all the curves used in this design are Bezier style curves. The fewer data points used, the more similarity with the authentic copy is achieved. An added element to the complexity of these designs has to be the 3D effect that was woven into these glyphs. The ancient artists added volume and perspective to them. You can see how the pelican in the top right is a combination of a top view and a side view. The same is seen with the bird on the left. It has a combination of two isometric views. The spider is also constructed with two superimposed planes. Another 3D element we can see is the folding of the drawing. If we unfold the branches of this tree, we will end up with a flat image with straight lines. The number of folds, however, is consistent. There are always five bends in every branch, so that is not coincidental. Igor's website goes into more details if you're interested, but he also did 3D models of some of these glyphs, and they kind of remind me of the Twitter symbol depicted in Stromae's video clip. The art pieces found in the Nazca culture, whether pottery or fabric, are rather primitive, and none of them share the unique single continuous line design. By the way, thank you for watching this far into this video. I know you might be bored by now, but trust me, it took me months to prepare for this video. So you know that your mind is going to be blown away towards the end of this video. And I'm very serious. I just love to keep the best for last, am I right? Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and let's question reality together.